Now we're going to take a closer look at random variables with densities. With densities. So you will recall that a random variable with a density is a random variable x that satisfies the property that its CDF, its cumulative distribution function, capital F, which is just this thing, probability that x is less or equal to a value little x, equals the integral from minus infinity to x of some integral function little f. And let's make some notational remarks here. We'll introduce, so we'll give a name to this thing. We've sort of referred to it as a density, but let's make that a little more precise. So first, we call this f, this little f, the probability density function PDF of the random variable x. And we often write, in this case, x tilde little f. And we write this. Now, of course, this is very similar looking to, if you watched the previous video on discrete random variables, how we use this notation uh, with other different types of things like PMFs or CDF. And this is yet another overuse of this same notation. In this case, if you know that this little f is a PDF, a probability density function, then when, this, when we write this, you know that that means that x has the PDF, little f. And you'll be able to tell from the context what's going on. So that's our first notation, notational remark. Next, let me say just a, a brief comment. I've been using capital P for probability measures and lowercase p for PMFs and lowercase f for PDFs or densities. Sometimes, you, sometimes we just say the density function or the density instead of the, the probability density function. So I've been using these letters, but oftentimes people will just use just a lowercase p or or just a or even an uppercase p for a for both PMFs and PDFs depending on the context. So if you were if they write you know a little p of x and it's a, it's a discrete random variable, then that would be interpreted as a PMF, and it's, if it's a, uh, a random variable with a density, then that might be interpreted as a density. So just be aware of the context. Now a third remark. It's a very convenient bit of notation. It seems almost trivial, so but it's extremely convenient. So we write I, capital I sub A, where A is some set, to be the function such that I sub A of x equals 1 if x is in A and 0 otherwise. And this is called the indicator function, indicator function of A. Very convenient notation. And oftentimes, as a sort of something very similar looking, just a convenient abbreviation, we'll write I of something here, I of blah blah blah, whatever it is, some condition. And that means that th this is equal to 1 if blah, that condition is true, is true and zero if if it's false. So that's just a convenient way of, uh, of giving, giving an, an indicator function, so to speak, to, to, to characterize something which is always one or zero. So this is very useful and we'll see actually some, that pop up a lot of times. 
Now let me give you some examples of very frequently occurring random variables with densities. So let's look at some examples. So the first one is perhaps the simplest. X is uniform. We say that we write it this way. X is uniform with parameters A and B, where A and B are real numbers with A strictly less than B, to mean that the probability density function, the PDF, is equal to 1 over B minus A when X is in this interval from A to B, and it's 0 otherwise. Otherwise. So what does this look like? Well, we can draw a little picture here for a uniform random variable. So if this is A and this is B, then the PDF looks like this. So it's this is sort of intuitively saying that this random variable x is going to pick one of the values in this interval with each each point being equally likely. The next example of a I'll leave that there for you to see is what's called an exponential random variable. So we write x is exponential exponentially distributed, might say, with parameter lambda, where lambda is some strictly positive, make that clear, positive real number. If the PDF of x equals lambda times e to the minus lambda x for x greater or equal to zero and it's a zero otherwise. So if x is negative, then, then f is zero. And this looks like, draw a little picture here. Let me draw it down here, so we have a little room. So if this is my x-axis, starts out here at lambda, and it drops off and it goes off, never quite reaches zero, goes off to infinity. That's the PDF of an exponentially distributed random variable. And this is often used, this has a very curious property that, so, so well, let me say, this is often used to model something like the lifetime. So I mentioned an earlier example of a, the lifetime of a light bulb as an example of a, random variable with the density and this would be the, the, the distribution that you might use to model that and one reason well I don't know if it's a reason why you use it to model that but this also has a very curious property called the memoryless property and what this means is so in, in the case of a light bulb the light bulb example what the memoryless property says is that if X is randomly distributed, and it's the time of the light bulb's lifetime, then given that your light bulb is working right now, the amount of time that it's going to, to live is the same. The probability distribution on that time is the same as if the light bulb was brand new. So that's a bit very a bit, a bit strange, a bit curious property, but that's that's true. That's a property of this random variable, so that makes it sort of interesting for a lot of applications. The next one is useful in statistics, and it's the beta distribution. So x is distributed according to a beta, alpha, beta. The parameters alpha and beta, where alpha is positive and beta is positive. If the PDF is equal to x to the alpha minus 1 times 1 minus x to the, whoa, excuse me, 
beta minus 1, my timer beeping at me, divided by this quantity b, I'll denote it, well this is the standard way to denote it, b of alpha comma beta, which is called the, the beta function, this is called the beta function, and this is for x in the interval from 0 to 1, and f is 0 elsewhere. So this thing looks like, well, it can look like a lot of different things, but it can look like this. So it's, this is 0, and this is 1, go like this, and I can then go back up. I can do something like this. Or it can go up and then back down, all kinds of things by varying these alpha and beta parameters. And this is often used to model the distribution of a, uh, a random variable which is itself a probability. So if that seems a little bit circular to you, and think about think about it a little bit maybe, make sense of that a random variable which is itself a probability. So it's between 0 and 1 always, right? This random variable is always between 0 and 1, so it's so at least it, it, it could possibly be a probability, and often we use this distribution to model probabilities. So one last example here. The most important distribution in all of probability, the normal distribution so we write x is normal with parameters mu sigma squared, where mu is a real number and sigma squared is positive, if the PDF equals 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma squared times e to the minus x minus mu squared divided by 2 sigma squared. And that's for all x, all real numbers x. And now you may be familiar with the normal distribution. You might model it. So well, first let me draw its, draw its PDF. So if this is mu here, then it's symmetric about mu, and its highest point is at mu. And the sigma controls the. That's the. Well, sigma is the standard deviation, sigma squared is the variance, so that's how spread out this thing is. And this is often used to model errors in something. So the error would be, you might say the error is normally distributed. And this is also, also often called the Gaussian distribution, named after the greatest, perhaps the greatest mathematician ever, Gauss, who invented this for the use of predicting the location of a newly discovered, well they thought it was a planet and it turned out to just be a, a really big asteroid called Ceres. And he used this distribution to model, to predict where the, the this object was going to be in the sky and he told his astronomer, the astronomers and they looked and they thought they were never going to find it, but then they found it just where he said. So the normal is a very useful distribution for theory and applications.